Do you love enemies to lovers relationships and want to learn how to write a believable enemies to lovers romance? Then you've come to the right place. I love the enemies to lovers trope and I'm here to share some tips. So be sure to stick around. Let's get started. guys, Noor here and welcome back to my channel! For those visiting for the first time, hello! I'm the fantasy author of the novel Divinity Falling. Be sure to subscribe for weekly writing advice videos. Writing a believable enemies to lovers romance, whether a romance book or a romantic subplot, is all about psychology. We must go at it the way people in real life fall in love after hating each other for some time. So to start, avoid making your character's relationship abusive. They're enemies, but that doesn't mean that abuse is okay. And there's nothing romantic about it. If it starts out abusive and somehow evolves into love, I'm going to puke, so leave that out. Next, make sure there's a reason why they hate each other and let it be something that can be resolved down the road. For example, maybe they hate each other over a misunderstanding. In fact, misunderstandings are frequently used in enemies to lovers romance. The first character is shy and the second character thinks the first character is stuck up and that misunderstanding leads to hate. But secretly, they're attracted to each other. It can be as easy as that formula. In fact, that's pretty much what Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice is about. It's also what Sally Thorne's The Hating Game is about. Both are some of my favorite books. Of course, at the end of the day, you're writing a love story, or at least a love subplot. Yes, there's hatred and misunderstanding, but when it comes down to it, you want these characters to fall in love. So early on, you must plant some seeds of love. First and foremost, the characters should find each other attractive, even if they don't make it known to each other. Obviously, attraction alone doesn't lead to love, but it's a good place to start. Later, you want to set these characters up so that they are forced to interact. In those instances, they must gradually drop hints through their actions and words about the kinds of people they truly are. For example, one character can make it known that they volunteer at a children's hospital because when they were younger, they lost a sibling to cancer and they want to do something in honor of that sibling. This makes the other character look at them with new light. Keep in mind, this doesn't mean that they should instantly like each other now. In fact, they should still hate each other. But this new information will open the door to love just a crack. They're a little bit closer to each other than they were before. And because this is an enemies to lovers story, you still want circumstances to come in the way of these two characters. Enemies to lovers is a mini conflict in your story. It's the subplot that comes with a lot of sexual or romantic tension. So you can't just flip the switch and create romance. You must build tension and make these characters' romantic lives difficult when it comes to wanting each other. Just because they had one positive interaction with one another in an earlier scene doesn't mean they are now friends. They're still still enemies. Maybe whenever they think the other person is nice, something occurs to make them doubt this newfound knowledge. And they go back to distrusting one another. Give their relationship obstacles all while wanting each other more and more each time they meet. Make them go back and forth with their doubts, wondering if they hate the person or want them. The transition from enemies to lovers shouldn't be easy. Speaking of tension, make sure to add sexual tension. This can be through dialogue and banter, their body language, or even the way they touch and look at each other. Sexual tension doesn't have to be dirty. It can be, but it could also remain clean and still be effective. It should make the characters want each other. I'm talking glances, blushing, touching hands, playing with the other's hair, and maybe kisses. Are they pushed together into a tight hallway when there's a crowd of people? This is the perfect time for that sexual tension to take place. They hate each other, but they also find each other very attractive. So always keep that in mind. Plus, it helps that you're making them doubt their hatred. You're softening their hearts one scene at a time. Then, once you've built enough tension between these two characters and brought them closer to one another, make them realize their hatred was a misunderstanding. They misjudged the other person. In fact, they don't hate each other at all. Now that they've gotten this far, they understand each other very well and actually like one another. The good things they've come to show each other have changed things, and they can't imagine not being together anymore. This moment usually happens in the third act or to toward the end of the book. Now they can finally be together and put aside their past feud. So that's all I have for you today. I'd love to know, what's your favorite part about enemies to lovers romance? Let me know in the comments. If you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe. I put out weekly writing advice videos that will take your story to the next level. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media to see what I'm up to from day to day and to chat with me. And before we go, I just want to give a quick shout out to Sarah Frain and Alan J. Early from my shout outs here over on Patreon, as well as all my amazing patrons. Thank you all so, so much for your support. I really, really appreciate you. And remember, nor for presidents. <laughs>